conversation I had with John Hill very briefly. Um, we're talking about curation, and he said, no, 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 there's no, there's no kind of distinguishing or dividing factors. It's all just an art practice in some way. And so um, I thought it'd be nice to talk about what we do here and what Lucky PDF do in terms of collaboration and trying to facilitate um, interaction with as many different groups and people as possible. And I think it's quite apt for PAMI because that was lots of people getting together to all work under one umbrella. So, yeah, do you want to talk about this show? Okay. Um, this, what, what we've set up here is, I, I suppose, is kind of exploration of archives in a new group, in like, kind of, this, initially in a few different ways, like, what, what can you do with an archive that, um, rather than just treat it as a, um, as a kind of sacrosanct body of, um, information or records or um, past work perhaps or something like that um, uh, how can we like understand the process of the archival drive or what you might do what you might how you might kind of approach digital archives I suppose so with the first event that we had last night um, the YBT performance was a very really kind of um, Exaggerated kind of way of going through the sort of processes that I mean, like if you think about like the internet as basically essentially just archives through which you um, navigate and use in a way that's not like the way that you'd conventionally use an archive in a library or as an institutional archive or something like that. So this performance was to sort of break it, break down the processes or the kind of interaction with that information and like heighten and really kind of push to the kind of extremities of what you might um, do when you're kind of approaching an archive. Um, on Saturday we're doing an event which is based around the Central St. Martin's archive um, and that's a sort of different kind of take on something which is a bit more kind of uh, lets the archive, lets the, the kind of archival artifacts sort of speak more, more for themselves but at the same time about um, this idea of like you construct an archive not just like you're, you're not just constructing it when you're collecting it together but actually constructing this sort of idea of an archive when you're re reusing it in a research thing, a research kind of body or um, telling a narrative because they're so sort of mutable once they're collected they're kind of the remnants of a sort of social or historical moment they're, kind of, they're not exactly the, the moment themselves but they're the remnants so it's about kind of reactivating perhaps a sort of similar moment to collecting the archives or where it came from um, and that's I mean in this installation it's perhaps a bit of an exaggerated form with the kind of, kind of step step screens which kind of like I guess in some way hints towards that kind of solidity of an archive or the kind of um, <coughs> idea of history but uh, the setup of this open archive with specific events that Kind of deal with the extremities of, of sort of archive interaction. Like we're trying to sort of learn or kind of kind of feel our way through the archives and perhaps. Sort of, um, I, don't know. I think there's an attempt to make it more and less dead. In a sense, yeah, because I mean, it's always it's always a remnant of something that's happened. So I think that it's trying to find a practice where it, it doesn't just become the proof that something's happened, and more a kind of uh, a, a tool by which to sort of um, understand what's going on, maybe like contextually now, or something like that. Um, but that is entirely necessary. Like 
it's entirely dependent on people using it, so it's sort of trying to make an archive something that cannot exist as just something that's filed away, I guess. That's, yeah, that's why we've got this linked up to the internet <coughs> and essentially the function of it is to be able to have anyone as a viewer or a, you know, just a visitor have some kind of instant tangible interaction with the show, with the space and with feeding into the archive as in rather than giving the object or artifact their their action and their navigation through what they're going to put up and what's going to be on the screen becomes part of it and becomes part of the action in itself, I think. And um, yeah, so that's why we've got at the moment Lucky PDF here and their website is up at the moment. And again, they they have an art practice which, like this installation, it acts as a container, for example, with Lucky PDF TV, so they have their art practice, but it involves many different artists and groups, and the website, I think, does that as well, and acts as that tool um, quite, in quite a self-contained way. So I think Lucky PDF should talk about it. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. I was wondering if you could, I could you could just explain a little bit about the exhibition apparatus that we've got, you know, <coughs> the way, because I feel like the, I feel like we're really inside an archive and it's really kind of like <coughs> archive made manifest in the structure that you've built and these, um, these bits and I just wondered how you kind of, whether, you, like, what was the process of you guys talking about how you wanted to um, have it physically in the space? Um, one of, there's a few factors which made us want to design and build these screens, it was firstly to kind of make a virtual archive something physical, um, help it be experiential. Um, also, I, you know, we wanted to be able to have people watching moving image, but also being faced with uh, the possibility of watching the viewer as well. So they are positioned in their viewing and they are part of the performance or the installation or the engagement with the image. Um, and also with the archival kind of institutional parody um, kind of went for slightly kind of um, gesturing towards neoclassical dominant, you know, going... Yeah, cool. yes, yes. Because you have to exaggerate it as well. Yeah. To, I mean, <clears throat> particularly if you're, if we're like, I mean, for this kind of event, it's predominantly virtual or like digital at least archive. Material, it's not kind of prime. I mean, apart, aside from the sort of born digital yeah. stuff, it's not, it's, it's a kind of digitized stuff. So, I mean, there's a kind of exaggeration, it's quite a kind of blunt, obvious gesture in some ways. But then you kind of need that, I suppose, particularly if you're kind of, it's quite easy to be kind of really um, taken in by a projected image. And that's been, one of the things we've been trying to do is uh, make it the power of I mean, it's kind of an obvious way, but um, I suppose the whole thing is about testing out how is you approach it. So, is any part of it, the guys that were, what was the name of it? Yeah, yeah. 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 you could see what they were, you could see there, then, yeah. what, was, what was that? Is Harry there? What was, it was. What was that? What was the role of that? What was the role of being able to see them? Because you're, you're talking about this part and you're talking about looking at other people and looking at this but then what was there's an action in like in kind of interacting with the digital archive that is very like it's completely intuitive i mean that's the kind of web design is deliberately intuitive and i suppose there's a ex, i mean again an exaggerated theatricality but it's just a presence where you can i mean like a physical presence here's harry ask can you paraphrase that question and direct um, it at Helen? Yeah, well, we were just talking about how these are these. This is kind of this, this setup is like a physical, physical archive, albeit kind of exaggerated. And what the, I just wanted to know what the kind of role was for you guys being, because it was kind of you guys were there, you could watch the performance, but it's still kind of side like a sideline. Do you know what I mean? Even though it was projected here. Yeah. yeah. But then you kind of answered that, Tom kind of answered that for me a bit, and I think, which is that it's part of the performance, it's part of that exaggeration, it's part of seeing physical 
What's the need for your like physical? I think I'm just asking how we how we figured out about where we'd be, like why we weren't in the centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we want to be behind the image all the time because it's something that's like projected outwards and. So that takes precedence. Yeah, the image surface and the image screen and the idea of that as a barrier or as some kind of mm. sensory thing is like a kind of primary thing. Right. I, I was also thinking a lot about like where, you know, you said before about how people were very much a part of a performance and there was this thing of sitting opposite someone and looking at other people's reactions and very, that was kind of very evident throughout and then there was this like mixing between where the performance actually was because it kind of was here but then and it was almost like that was backstage and it was sort of mixing because you were interjecting and I like that kind of slippage between what was on stage and the theatrical moment and, and like where that was. Mm. It was quite uncomfortable as well. Yeah. Like it was weird sitting across from people. It was quite kind of hard work <laughs> sitting across from people and kind of seeing their reactions. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Catching people's eyes. Yeah. It's like, oh. say a little bit about your sort of um, collaborative practice but I don't think we can pack up. I think it's kind of about. evident this in is this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, this is kind of how it works in terms of collaborative practice. Yeah, yeah. that's right, by way of introduction. Yeah, so just to, by, sort of to introduce you to our website, which you won't be watching too much video from because it's quite... <laughs> Um, so it's, a, it's an embedded video, it's a bit slow. Power of, power of power of power, yeah. Yeah. The presentation is very important to can us. Can I, can I just say that I think this is the first ever public screening of this film? Because we've never shown it, it's only ever been on But you've done the same. I don't really know. We do have sound. Well, sound? Turned oh no. <laughs> there was a bit of the Lucky PDF's uh, Sun Gallery party. Yeah, yeah that was just rushes. Yeah. That was like unfinished. So it's, this is the tiny thing, and that's online now, we can actually go home and watch it. You can find it on all <laughs> home computers. Literally <laughs> 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 everywhere. It's so much nicer to watch it together. Okay, but perhaps we ought not to for 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, so this project is something that um, I guess on a recent projects that we've been doing have involved collaborations with other people to realise a, a project where the, the outcome is something that we have a kind of co-authorship with um, the people who participate. And we, as much as possible, try to accommodate the sort of everybody's input in realising a project. We've then become a kind of uh, producer role 
um, in, in relation to like a kind of, as a curatorial strategy, we essentially want to initiate a process that will have an outcome that we all kind of decide collectively. And so for this project, it was a film we made in the Barbican Conservatory, perhaps you recognise it, and we worked with eight different artists, um, mostly performance-based, some who had worked with like, the film process before. We worked with Your Body as a Temple as well. Um, and uh, hopefully it was kind of an opportunity to uh, sort of like recontextualise the work that we do do all independently, perhaps having a gallery practice and maybe realising how some of these ideas, filmmaking process could be realised in, in a live context so that the filmmaking process was completely transparent and the live, the, the audience that was live in the space could watch this process um, and would be sort of treated as just as uh, somebody else on set. Um, so we, we, we didn't have too much sort of documentation or, but in the way of press releases that introduced the project, really you could just arrive and you'd sort of see our process and it was completely transparent. When you, when you started, like for example this piece, did you have stuff set in mind that you wanted to do? Did everyone come to I mean, I think the starting point was like what, could, what would be a good thing to do in this space? And at the time, it was a, great, a unique opportunity to shoot something in this amazing location. Yeah. And really, like the kind of working process was quite organic. It was we, we wanted to kind of put things in the space that we thought would work, um, that would actually use the space in a way that would benefit the specific performances, and work with artists who we think w thought would engage with that space and be able to respond. Mm -hmm. to it. So you, you saw the space first, then you kind of picked out the kinds of people that you... Yeah, it, what, the, but the curate, curatorial strategy wasn't as dict, dictatorial yeah. as that, um, because then it was a case of invitation to propose right. yeah. ideas that we could work on together. And But always with this premise that the outcome would be something that existed as a holistic thing, where there were various components within that, but the sort of autonomy of each of the artists' work would be... Um, somewhat like lost for this for this creating like a greater product Same, at the end, yeah. and that's pretty much the. Uh, I think that's quite important with all the projects we've realised, and that's in a way where we introduce our authorship. So people as relinquish artists. relinquish their control or their kind of. Well, we negotiate that kind of control, um, so that for example with this we, are, although most of the footage was was uh, we we sort of directed with quite a lot of dialogue with the artists, the, the shots, the sequence, so through this performance we, would, we were keen to get certain details so that it would make a great film, but with this, because the actual un materiality of the filmmaking process was something that was really important to your body as a temple, and this, these clips are from them, they did the editing, because actually in terms of texture on the screen, that was something they were interested in, and so their like, live process was actually quite free form, whereas some of the other performances were much more, um, they were determined, the, the, the sort of uh, structure of those performances were arranged so that they could be recorded for camera. This was recorded with, the, with their editing in mind. So, I think the control question is actually like really, really important because, um, like you were saying about how when artists do come, like do projects with us, they relinquish some control, mm. which is, is I guess it's true. I mean, you can like, you, this is like you have this, you're, or like you, you want to be an artist because you want to like have all that control. Yeah, you kind of like, and I guess that's how we're taught. You like have to do, make it for yourself and be able to like justify it yourself and like mm. that control that you have is you, is what your it's practice okay. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then. I think what we're, one of the things we're trying to do is like, well, like you, you, you kind of cl like cl assert your autonomy by what? Um, he liked it. <laughs> we're, we're, having, we're having a running um, Facebook like, uh, Facebook, Facebook like battle with Pammy. <laughs> we're, we're, we're losing. Are we? <laughs> oh my god. I have no idea. <laughs> it's just one that's kind of one. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. Um, they, uh, yeah, so there's this idea that you're this artist and you have control of your practice, but that you then completely forget about all the control yeah. you lose. I mean, there's this like nonsense about like, oh, you make the artwork and then you send it out into the world and you lose your control and it's your baby that has to go up and like, whatever. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. but like, so you, you're like, artists are like so precious about all this control they have at the making stage and then so flippant about yeah, control yeah, yeah. later like on. Yeah, contradiction of that. Whereas, I think what we're trying to do is, yeah, like, you have to, you don't get to, you don't edit your own film. Someone else edits your film, someone else edits it with other stuff and it puts it all together. But, like, then it's like the the distribution of the work and, like, all, all that happens after the work, like, after it's made, just kind of stays within, I guess, stays as part of the artwork. So the artwork isn't, like, you don't then kind of give up for someone else to, to deal with or to sell or to write about it's kind of like all all of those then things. Then doesn't that still come down to who's like you guys have essentially you guys have control of the piece after it's been made. Is not it, exclusively. Not exclusively. So it's part of our sort of remit for making but work. I mean, isn't it's it? potentially isn't there an issue with like because I understand what you're saying, but if everyone's got that ability to put it where they want to put it, the fact that everyone else is putting it somewhere else, you lose that individual control over it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, like yeah, it. but then, I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, that, that is a good point, it's like, but then you put it on the internet, so it, it's like, it, like it, it, you don't, can't control yeah. how the film is yeah, shot, yeah. because it's... There's but always, also, so. also, internally, we have different aims and goals from realising these projects, even with, within ourselves, so there's right. quite a lot of trust that, you know, is necessary, is needed, mm -hmm. so that you can realise projects on this scale, where actually you have to relinquish some authorship mm. for, like, a kind of greater project. And if people recontextualise it and they do it under their own name, yeah, the framing changes. Mm -hmm. But if the name and the author has changed, then the, the meaning of the piece has changed to that artist as well anyway. So that, that, that change of context is actually not a change of the piece, whereas it might be if you placed a, a figurative paint, uh, painting about beauty in like a, a feminist art show. Yeah really plausible, changes the piece completely, yeah, yeah. but I don't see that with, with, with our recontextualization of work and when we distribute with it to other artists and they allow them to distribute without too much control. So it's um, more like an, open, it's, it's like an openness from the beginning as opposed to living in the con contradiction which is like you as the individual make this piece and then you kind of let your baby go into the world, it's more that from the beginning you're all kind of conscious and aware that yeah, you're having individual contributions, but at the end of the day, it's, you know how, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, kind of it's good, reason, everybody has a different reason to participate in the project as a whole, and so you can take that reason with you, you know, and then you, it's become something that is useful to you, and hopefully at the point where you're manufacturing the piece, it's useful, and in a way that's more important to us, the methodology and the process is something that, in a way, that's where the piece for us exists. Because so it's not so much this... this <laughs> It's not this that we're seeing, it's, it's what happens to it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was just going to say, is that, I mean, this is a film, and the film is a, is a, I mean, when I say it's, it's the finished film, that's kind of not really, I mean, it might be, or we might change it. I don't, I mean, it isn't, like, I, I don't know. Whether, it's not a concern. Yeah. Um, but, like, and within that, there's, there's <coughs> performances that people have done, and they're, but then, like, then the words, like the words, like I think it, I, 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 the word composite, like composite images, kind of, mm -hmm. and, and films and, and textures on the screen and um, gifs and all, all of this is a sort of composite moving whole, rather yeah. than something something quite fixed. Mm. But then I mean, this is I mean, this was like a one-day film shoot and then an edit of that film shoot. But that's so you can see that as like isolated. But the people we're working with this and this for this project will lots of them will we're working with again for our next project or we might work on the project after mm -hmm. that and it's not the like the work isn't it's not like the, it's, this is just kind of a byproduct almost so it's kind of going back to what Kelly Mitchell was talking about in terms of like how you're looking at archives in terms of like how the internet's an archive and that's kind of organic and flexible so you're saying this is not an individual it's not a one-off thing because it's kind of you can access the archive in that manner it kind of stays alive so. I guess so but well, also, I mean, it's alive in as much as that the process is a tool for engaging in conversation with people. Yeah. 
How, can, can we can we get our hands up of who, who was involved in this film? In the room? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It struck to me that the, um, the control and the, the control element of it and the kind of disciplined element comes in the process and in that uh, in affecting the collaboration and that what you get out of that it seems to me is that is is an element of the unexpected and that being a really creative element and mm. something which from and it's perhaps the same with dealing with this archive that you you uh, create a structure albeit uh, you know, a malleable structure and that can then be engaged with and create opportunities and ideas and you know I can't I can't I mean do you have a vision of what it is or do you just kind of it strikes me that there is a lot which you can't um, predict in a way but that's something that you can relish in with yeah, you don't, we, when we invite the six eight eight <laughs> um, they're all here you got you <laughs> um, we didn't know what they were going to do maybe you're just really lucky here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, but the risk is if the risk, everyone's taking the risk, and that's why it's good, and that's why good things happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but then it's like it's not just. I mean, it's all the old stuff that happens between the people who are involved and how they can. Yeah, I mean, I guess this. I mean, this is it's really, it's really difficult. Like the collaboration thing is. You can't like stick two artists in a room and go, "Hey guys, <laughs> collaborate." Because <laughs> um, like, cause, like that's not a very like yeah, it's not like if you ask someone to do that, they're going to say no because that's a rubbish invitation. So with this, it's like the structure is facilitating the collaboration. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it's like like I mean, it could be like it could have been a collaborative film, I and mean, it is a collaborative film, but it's like made up of individual parts. Mm -hmm. um, but then within that, every like the edge of the whole bleed. Yeah, and part of the way that we get, we maybe are able to um, avoid the, the difficulties of a conversation like that is by hopefully proposing like a display, a display format that's quite unusual to that artist's normal mode of practice and, dis and distribution. Which put them so far so out of their it, comfort zone. Yeah, but also that the what we're producing could exist in like a tangential part of their practice, or we're asking them to reconfigure. We're not really asking them to reconfigure a piece for our new context, we're asking them to reconsider their practice in the context of what we're doing. Yeah. So it's quite it easy for... like a big ask though, when you put it like yeah. that. Yeah, but I think it is, because I think, but I think that is ho hopefully an invitation that's challenging, but therefore rewarding. That, yeah, appealing. Is, yeah, <coughs> hopefully. Is it a disavowal of like normal institutions, I suppose? Because in a sense, it's kind of like you're um, commissioning artists to work within the institution that it's kind of like, although not physical, is what you've set up in a sense. But I mean... Like, I think if we ever thought we were institutional, <laughs> we might want to move, we make sure we move <laughs> away from that. The yeah, institution, because I mean, quite often you're working with yeah. institutions as well. I mean, mm. Within. <laughs> no, I think that's the that was kind of what I was trying, the point I was trying to make about the control thing. It's like um, the all that stuff, which is not which is the job of the institution. All the stuff you give away, you take. You all the stuff artists give away, you reclaim. So yeah, like like curation, for example, like the work self curates and the work self documents and the work like self displays and it's it's all the, yeah so is it like a smoke screen between the work and what the institution might try and take or something or that? may i don't know i mean we did this i suppose this is kind of like a it's not an entire description but i'm sort of interested in like sort of putting up against an institution but it's kind of completely different display for I don't think we see institutions and artists in the conventional way. I mean, we understand the meaning of those terms, but it's not important to us. 
So therefore, an institution can offer us things <laughs> that, that, like a location, that is not necessarily connoted with, unless you attach some meaning to it. Or an artist does, is not exclusively somebody who uh, works in a, romantically in their studio for 30 years and then produces a body of work that is, you know... So then if you're not concerned with anyone else's worries, is that a danger of becoming kind of exploitative? I don't think so because I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think that's you know that could be if you're an not, outmoded mode way of pra you know yeah, artist in, practice. In, in your in your opinion, or it could be something that someone holds dear to them, yeah. and that you can just fly, like right over it, yeah. you not not give a shit. What, what so like the, the, the artists the, the, decide like, to participate as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah but um, and then if they decide fully aware. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's, there's, a, there's a real, real problem, um, and we'll we go. Yeah, we don't we, we don't believe in authorship. And put our name on it. Or which is, is kind of like the, the the joke. It's like it's a stupid name to put. And it, but yeah, it's like but people have people get very are very personal and protective and for good reasons. Of not just about how it's about work, but also about like how they are presented. Yeah. As artists, um, and I think if you don't worry about it, you have a lot more fun. So you shouldn't worry about it. We we'll said that, mate. Luring, <laughs> luring them in. <laughs> 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 and, um, on that note, we should get talk about the, the, um, talking about the kind of you guys acting within an institution. But what about you guys acting within a corporate commercial art firm? I think we have a responsibility to the artists whose work we're interested in to give it the best distribution and exposure possible, and we will use whatever tools there are at our disposal to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're so, you're so <laughs> Not that you that. I'm oh. sure. As, if anyone doesn't yeah. know, we're doing a freeze projects commission in October. I don't know if I heard that, John. <laughs> um, and. For the Freeze project, we're inviting about 50 different artists to come and make a TV show, basically. So it's a four-day TV show, 50 artists doing 50 individual, not, not necessarily 50 individual pieces, some people are like, mm -hmm. anyway, doing the set design of the or whatever. Um, yeah, and like, it's, but it's like, you kind of, I mean, it's tricky because it's like an opportunity, it's, it's, it's like, an opportunity we can extend, a great opportunity that we can extend to as many people as possible, in some respect. I mean, that's like one way of looking at it. Um, and it's not, it's not clear cut because there are like issues within that specific context. I think what we try to do is pretend we're not at freeze. <laughs> I and mean, I think we're trying to like drop in a, a fully formed project into the fair. It's mm -hmm. like we're doing all our rehear like rehearsals in our studio and like the, we will with a huge number of people we're gonna make this thing and then we're gonna take it there. Uh, also I think it's worth mentioning, you know, let's not it's so easy to just be down on an art fair. I mean I think personally Sam Corey is doing really exciting things with that freeze project thing and the freeze film and stuff, they've made some fantastic commissions. Yeah. So I'm excited about a lot of the other stuff that's going on. So I think it's it's cool. It's been great. And I think, but I think also like, what, like with the freeze project, it's like, yeah, we're going to be making the making the the product at freeze, but then it's going to be on the website. It's going to be like other places, or it's going to be like. What is the get, What is the product? I'd say four hours of TV, of magazine yeah. show. Okay. I guess. Can you, you buy? Can you buy the hour day? Can you buy? It? Yeah. What would it be? <laughs> <laughs> if you did buy it, what would it be? There are, there are like various components to it. I mean, I you could uh, you could like. Well, that's I mean, that's pretty, like yeah, we're gonna like yeah, it's this for sale. It's like what what would buying it be? It'd be I guess we'd be doing it again, but not the same. It couldn't be because you couldn't do it again the same. I mean, you could buy like the set installation and all the videos all right. and we can. Like, no one's going to buy it. <laughs> Far too expensive. But that's another thing. I think it's interesting about the three saying that because I know Ollie particularly, you've talked a lot about kind of um, the link with advertising and selling space and and things you know 
playing like a commercial body in some way. Yeah. And I think there's definitely, you, I think you've kind of not talked about it so much recently with, in conversations, but there was a period, I mean, like I know, I remember that funny thing on the, with um, the tape and selling, the idea of, kind of oh, selling yeah. advertising space, mm. and you were totally into it for a while. Yeah, yeah, no, we, 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 we've been trying to get sound like a yeah. TV show, but... So doing acting, <laughs> you know, doing overtly, being overtly commercial. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm. hard cash. Yeah. Well, well, but that, so it's but then, it's stupid to pretend that, like... It's not an issue, it's not a fact, though. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. well, that's what, like, the project's supposed to be non-commercial. Like, that's the whole thing in the project's at an incredibly commercial art fair. So it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's an interesting thing to, like, put those things into it. To, to bring it into the mix, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Half-formed question, but uh, the, uh, do, uh, doing a lucky PDF in freeze poses the question for the future of the commercial art world, or what the or how the art world um, defined uh, is defined in terms of a business. What does your model pose for that future? It's a half-formed question. I don't think we're going to compromise the project for the purposes of selling a component of it. But, but your, there are, your, what your model is, uh, one, one of the facets is collaboration mm -hmm. and commissions in a, in a way. Yeah. Um, it's not pictures on, on walls. So I'm interested in, in what that <coughs> kind of, what, what you see that is developing for you guys as a, as a collective in a way. How you integrate with that. Like, the art world that is. Like the, like the Freeze project is effectively a commissioning project where we've been asked to commission lots of other artworks, which is like a, quite like a, such an amazing opportunity to mm. be able to like someone to give you a, a medium sized amount of <laughs> 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 and uh, for you to go let's like, all do something really good. I don't know, but then like so like and that and then that's this like institutional thing. Like you do you perform the role of the institution, um, but then I also think it's like this is it's like byproducts of the process become for sale if they can find. But also, I think how Harriet touched upon it. So we're not necessarily going to get interested in engaging exclusively in the art world, and mm -hmm. like we 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 maybe come from like an arts background, but I think we're more interested in where you can locate artistic temperament in society at large, and how ideas can be communicated to an audience. And there's loads of ways of doing that, if, and if, be it that even on you know terrestrial television or whatever. Like there are avenues that we would be keen to explore. That this context is inappropriate, and the model for distribution and sales is really old-fashioned. Yeah. No more stuff in the room. Yeah, and down with stuff in the room. Down with painting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like, that's yeah. Really epic. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall we finish up and go to the pub? <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, for thank coming. you very much. Thank you.